That's right, let's get into it. The good, the bad, and the ooze -maki. All right, let's talk about Uzumaki. This came out, I don't know when it came out, like four weeks ago on, it's an adult swim venture that was streamed on Max. And I have some thoughts about it. It's from Junji Ito, who I've only recently discovered as little as perhaps a year ago. I had no idea who Junji Ito was, and I have been pleasantly surprised. So that will color my opinion here, because there are a lot of fans out there that are big mad with Uzumaki and the animated adaptation. Now... This was my first exposure to it. I had I had seen there was another one on Netflix that a lot of people didn't like. Those different adaptations of his short stories, which were pretty bleak, and uh, I like. But I guess people have called him like the Stephen King of of the uh, of the East of the Japanese culture. It, well, at least is influential, influential. And then Uzumaki is like his. Magnus Opus, because it's all about the city. It's kind of like his Castle Rock. I personally really enjoyed the material. So I'm going to have to separate that from the actual product we are given, which, yeah, there were some problems with. But as someone who's never experienced any of this before, I was like, wow, this is pretty fantastic. It's pretty disturbing. And I thought it was put together in a pretty good way. But the best way to describe episodes two, three, and four are like uh, like a PowerPoint presentation of his of 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 what he did in a in a different way. So and to to give everybody kind of a heads up, it's a uh, Uzumaki is the story of this cursed town that is cursed with spirals. Spirals are a uh, you know an important part of Japanese culture. It holds a lot of power and uh spiritual you know all that good stuff and uh the place <laughs> let's just say it spirals out of control all sorts of crazy weird stuff happens and then eventually it kind of leads into this crazy cosmic ha uh horror and we'll get to the spoilers at the end so I i'll try not to spoil it for now it's really told from the perspective of these two high school students who are, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend as they experience with things with their families and, and everything that goes on. So let's go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good in my, my the source material. Now I've never read the manga, and this is an anime or as whatever they want to call it, because it's not really. I uh, just absolutely I couldn't have thought one inch about a spiral before, and now I'm absolutely horrified by them. Congratulations, Jujito. Congratulations, sir, on terrifying me of spirals. Now, I will never look at the spiral the same way. As it's, as you slowly descend into the center, into madness, which is it's, it's perfect because uh, I would like to consider this a spiritual successor to the Cthulhu mythos on some level. And uh, absolutely, I would like to think inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. I have not seen anybody do cosmic horror this good in a long time. So, again, kudos to you, you, you genius man. And then the one thing I will say about the show that I thought was really impressive, and uh, some people may disagree. Well, you know, I don't know how people feel. The soundtrack, I will never listen to the soundtrack ever again without thinking about this, this audio from it. It's uh, Colin Stetson. And I'm just going to play a second of it for you so I don't get nailed. But, I mean, this is just brilliant. I, I could never hear that that those, those horns in that pattern again and not think of Uzumaki. And I just thought that that was absolutely wonderful. Really, really nailed it. The, the problem with this thing is it's been in development hell for about four or five years. It was done pre-pandemic, or it started to be done pre-pandemic. And a lot of people had hinged a lot of hopes like, 
Finally, we're going to get a good adaptation of something that Junji Ito did and not just steal his stuff. Let's hear a little taste more. Uh, I just love this the sweeping horns and the uh, the arpeggios it's just brilliant absolutely love it cannot speak more highly about it loved it absolutely loved it love the material source material love the source 10 out of 10 on the soundtrack 10 out of 10 on the source material 10 out of 10 on the writing as far as anything that Juju Ito had to do with it so I'm a big fan big convert this guy's the ma- amazing, amazing. So what went wrong? Really, the first episode, people had people were super excited. It's black and white. It's very distinct and like nothing you've ever seen before. And then the quality really started to dip in episode two. Well, the executive producer had an answer. We were screwed over. Come on, Adult Swim. You guys have, like, it could at least pay for, like, what is going on here? Uh, so, it's been, it was first announced in 2019, and it's only four episodes. Four episodes, and you guys couldn't make this happen. Uh, so, Jason DeMarco had a bunch of things to say. Uh, it's fine. We knew this would happen. I can't talk about what it went, went down, but we were screwed over. And the options were, were A, not to finish it and air nothing and call it a loss. Just finish and air episode one and leave it incomplete. Inc- Run all four, warts and all, out of respect to the hard work we chose C. So they ran them all. So apparently after the first episode, something happened. They had to change. They fired the director. They fired the animation studio and had to go a different direction. But holy cow, I think there are fans out there who could have done better. It just looks like Mo, like somebody took panels sort of, you know, dumbed them down and then just like animated them. I've seen comic books that were animated better than this. So... Very confusing. Oh, if I played... I'm so sorry. If I played music on top of music, folks, let me go back and just... I want to go back and and I'll listen one more time because this is so good. This build-up right here is just unbelievable. On the first thing... It's so disturbing. I just love it. Absolutely genius. So good job there. Uh, I'm going to put the music back on. Sorry, folks. I'm playing music on top of music like some sort of clown. My bad. My bad. So anyway, uh, so they had some trouble. And uh, a lot of people were super excited and then super not happy. Disaster. Uh, the animation is just embarrassing. Let's not, yeah, like, they're just not animating it. They're like, oh, yeah, look at this. We don't have to do anything, do we? Uh, there was a bunch of other clips, too, where they're just super, uh, people are super disappointed. Um, so then we go on, and I wanted to, let's get to spoilers now. And I just want to explain, this is... So animation goes from, uh, you know, maybe like an 8, 9 out of 10 to like a 3 out of 10, 2 out of 10. And then let's talk about uh, the overall story. So essentially this town, like crazy things just start happening. I mean, things I never would have even thought of. People become obsessed with spirals. And essentially the town gets annihilated by these typhoons that just keep hitting it. But the typhoons keep getting absorbed for energy and the townsfolk seem to have all disappeared and the entire town's been leveled but now it's starting to get rebuilt and uh crazy thing people turn it into snails they don't know why time doesn't seem to operate properly all these crazy things kind of uh weave in and out of each other and i don't i have no idea if that's how the manga works but i'd like to think that it does maybe they're unrelated incidences but I, but i don't know like people's hair starts forming spirals and attacking each other and and doing all sorts of crazy things. And, uh, the, they send in the military and and they get sucked into, uh, into whirlpools. And essentially there's a, there's a lake at the middle of the town and the town is clearly cursed. 
And eventually everything kind of forms into one big spiral. They reform the city and all of the townsfolk eventually get funneled down into this hole that's at the bottom of it. And it just goes down and down and down until you reach the city of spirals, which I just felt the need to show you. And this is what good cosmic horror it does for you. It just, it's incomprehensible. It's something out of that human minds cannot comprehend. It's ex existential nihilism, existential dread, this fear of the unknown, the thing you cannot know, the thing that will drive you mad merely looking at it. And, you know, the all the people are have been twisted into this bed of, of, uh, just crazy, you know, that's the ground is, is all the town people and these towers and the spirals and, and maybe it's an entity, maybe it doesn't care, maybe it's ambivalent, you know, the people are just part, just a tool when it gets bored or sad or unknown. And that's where it all comes from, from H.P. Lovecraft. Um, Here's the description directly from H.P. Lovecraft. Now, all my tales are based on the fundamental premise that common human laws and interests and emotions have no validity or significance in the vast cosmos at large. And that's what it boils down to. Ex existential nihilism, philosophical pessimism, is that the world moves without you. Humans are so self-interested and so involved in their egos and their id, and, and they cannot move the universe we are merely specks of dust with greater things happening that we, you know, the cosmos shrugs and is completely indifferent, which then alienates us from everything. It can drive you insane. And uh, I just think that's pretty cool that, that he, you know, must have been inspired by this. Like I said, I don't know that much about it, but in order to come up with this, you clearly had to understand a little bit about cosmic horror because there's a city underneath of the city and that city, you know, calls to the people who live there and annihilates all of them and then resets itself all to start over again. So that's the story. Wow. Let's just look at the reviews real quick. And uh, I don't, I don't know how updated this is, but they don't have, it's not broken down very well. But 89% on the critic side, 81% on the audience side. I just don't think the audience is going to be that happy. I've heard so many people angry and upset about this that uh, it's, it's very kind of sad. With any luck, maybe one day we'll get a real adaptation of this. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Did you see it? Were you highly disappointed? Again, I can only judge it from the fact that I had never seen anything like it before understanding that there's better source material out there i can understand everybody's disappointment and i can i can agree with you so but i'm still glad i got to see it i'm glad i got to hear the music i'm I, I i just think it all really worked well other than the fact that it looked it did take me out of it there were times where i was like oh wow that's cheap looking but i was still so engrossed in the story and that's the power of a good story so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I just wanted to cover this. Not a lot of people are talking about it, and I felt like I should give a voice. As a HP Lovecraft expert myself, you see Cthulhu dangling right there next to my squids. My space squids that are trapped in their jar, which I got to fix. Uh, he's hanging. He's dangling right there. Godzilla, he's practically cosmic horror. You know? So anyway, thanks for listening. I love all y'all. Uh, but I'm on to the next one. Thanks for catching the video. Be sure to join our channel to get the education you deserve. Make sure you check out our shorts, live streams, and catch us on all the socials. Don't forget to like and subscribe.